the most challenging part of filming season one, I think, probably had to be the logistics. Uh, I think getting the right cameras, the right lighting, setting up the studio, um, getting everybody on board and kind of aligned on the vision um, and just being prepared to shoot. I think that was something that, you know, uh, none of us had ex prior experience with. And so, you know, we had to figure it all out. Um, fortunately, we live in the modern age of uh, digital media where YouTube videos, Google can help you kind of figure some things out. And we look for, you know, local resources who had expertise in lighting and cameras to find the right equipment. Um, but I think, you know, there was a lot of challenges, but that one probably was probably the most challenging. The most challenging part of filming season one. Now, filming and doing it are almost two different things. So for me, I would say the, the challenging part about filming was making sure, A, I wasn't doing anything weird. Uh, and to give more of a real answer... And, uh, and I, I mean this with all respect to Jimmy because I love him, but all the preparation, all the work that went into each episode and what we wanted to talk about was wonderful for me and my anxieties because I, I'm a planner. I like to know what we're going to talk about ahead of time. But one of the most challenging aspects was when we would bring up a question or I would pose a question to Jimmy. And he would answer it and then go on and on and on. And in the moment, I had to listen to him while also in my head trying to figure out a way of how the hell are we going to transition out of this. <laughs> uh, while it was really challenging, though, it was super fun. My favorite moments, um, I think, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't call them outtakes because we weren't trying to do an outtake, but just when we messed up, right, and we just got a good laugh out of it. I think a Andrew is just a natural, and he speaks from the heart, and sometimes he, you know, maybe go a little bit over, you know, on the honesty scale, uh, which I love. I love that he's super vulnerable and, you know, is able to just kind of let it all out, um, and he – prevents himself from going there and he'll stop and he'll laugh and we'll all get a good laugh out of it. But I think just those moments when he takes it a little bit too far and then we just get a kick out of it. My favorite moments from season one, uh, there, there's several, but I really loved watching the progression of the podcast from episode one to episode 12 because being inexperienced in hosting a podcast, uh, both myself and Jimmy being a part of a podcast, you could see the growth that was happening from each episode as we became more confident, uh, more comfortable, and going from knowing nothing to starting to know a little something, I think showed in a really good way. And it's not to say that our early episodes were, were done poorly or, or were bad, but knowing what we know now, it would be fun to go back and redo those early episodes just because I'm so hard on myself and there's things that I definitely could have done better. Um, but one thing that I, I really loved and a lot of it has to do with my history as a performer, as a musician, as an actor. And Everything that I've had to learn over the years to be able to do those things, you know, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy, but it takes experience. And I've been through this in the in the past, learning and growing and adapting and, and everything like that. But I loved watching Jimmy go through the performance anxiety, go through all the stages of uh, confidence, you know, at first. Right. Yeah. Welcome back to the Zizzo Effect podcast. But then it, it's a different thing. You know, you, you can feel good about yourself. You can know what you're talking about. But then watching yourself back is a whole other story. And I 
thought it was really cool to be a spectator to watch Jimmy's performance anxiety. <laughs> uh, because for me, I like, you know, I have a tendency to put people in his position on more of a pedestal, sort of untouchable, somebody that I don't feel, uh, you know, is, is necessarily a, a colleague because he's my boss. But it really humanized him and watching him struggle actually made me feel better. <laughs> Well, it's definitely evolved quite a bit. I think one of the um, most obvious, obvious evolutions of the podcast is just confidence, both from myself, from Andrew, uh, from the crew, you know, who's involved. Um, of course, you, Alex, Rianne, um, anybody who was involved in a podcast, we started to get more confident. Um of course, the content was something that we, I don't want to say struggled with in the beginning, but we had a, a vision and an idea of where we wanted to go with it. Uh, but just preparing, I think we, we started to prepare less and I think it made it more natural. Um, and, you know, but definitely still stuck with the vision of what content we wanted to share with our audience. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Zizzo Effect Podcast. Grand finale of the Zizzo Effect Podcast. Knowing what we know now, it's so much easier to look back and say, I would have done this differently. I would have done that differently. I believe that our product in the podcast was really good from the start, but I think the, the progression of over-preparing, prepping everything I wanted to say, every question that was going to be asked and mapping it all out felt the way, you know, maybe at the time it was the way to go at the start, but I think anybody that followed along from episode one to episode 12 uh, would be able to say and, and see that it became more conversational, more comfortable uh, and sort of more, more natural as the season went on, uh, whereas, you know, there were definitely points we wanted to hit, but as, and I, I really can only speak for myself as I became more comfortable doing it, uh, be, it, it was a lot easier to just have that conversation instead of always thinking about the next question. Anything's possible. I, I think, you know, you set your mind to something. It's been part of who I am, uh, but just getting everybody on board and committed to to completing something yeah I, I think for me nothing is ever impossible um but i didn't realize you know how how big of a task creating a podcast is and you know and i think maybe after the fact when people start kind of recognize like oh my god you have a podcast so oh. and you know people love our studio they love the content and, you know, realizing like when I made that decision initially, it was like, oh, yeah, sure. Let's get our own content. You know, there's a lot that we have to offer and share in terms of information and knowledge. Would love to do it in an engaging and fun way. Um, and then, uh, you know, getting everybody on board. Uh, but it's anything is possible. You set your mind to it. I think we accomplished a full season. Well, we did accomplish a full season, but um and then we're now planning season two. It's it's a great accomplishment. The biggest lesson that I learned, which was a very hard one uh, to accept, was having the confidence in my abilities. So I don't mind sharing that I struggle pretty bad with imposter syndrome in pretty much every aspect of my life. And... I, I wish it was easier for me to accept when other people have confidence in me to agree with their opinion. Um, but finally reaching a point where I felt that I deserved to be in this position and deserved to be in this role and I was chosen because uh, of who I am and, and my knowledge about the, the product, about gamification and everything that we talked about, um, being able to accept that I kind of do know what I'm doing was actually really difficult for me, but it was a, a lesson that not only helped me in the podcast world, but truthfully goes into other aspects of my life as well. Parenting, friendships, everything like that. Um, they a huge lesson that I've learned. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, there was one episode, I'm sure you remember, uh, you know, we had prepared and, you know, my preparation is, you know, somewhat different. You know, I like to be a little bit more off the cuff and just kind of come from uh, from the heart and from, from the mind and just kind of deliver information I already know. And, you know, we had prepared a, an episode where it was just, it felt a little bit overprepared, and, but also I wasn't prepared. It was an interesting dichotomy between those two. Um, and it was just a weird day for me. And, you know, we stopped. I said, look, it's nobody's fault. We just got to stop. We got to stop shooting. Let's, let's try this again tomorrow. And, you know, the next day everything was fine. Everything was perfect. We were able to just, you know, take that content and just do it as we would do it normally, just having a conversation. So, um, that was, uh, that was a moment that I had that I think kind of maybe surprised some people, but for me, it was like, it just wasn't the day. And sometimes you just have one of those days. <laughs> yes. Uh, the biggest hurdle I had to overcome, um, well, I guess maybe it wouldn't be unexpected. It's just, again, who I am, but the biggest hurdle I had to overcome was myself. I was, I am my biggest critic. I am harder on myself than I need to be. In some ways, I think it makes me better at what I do. But I would have to say, yeah, the, the biggest hurdle was getting out of my own way. I feed off of Andrew. I mean, he's got just amazing energy and positivity and personality. Um, you know, the, the more upbeat he is, that feeds me. And, you know, we kind of, I think, bounce off of each other's energy. Um, you know, there's, of course, we have coffee that helps. But, you know, anytime I feed more off the energy in the room, I think when everybody is is excited, is is prepared and, you know, is happy and is positive. I think I feed off of that energy. And, you know, of course, with my co-host, it's his energy is just so uh, contagious. And so I feed off of him. Uh, drugs. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, the energy and enthusiasm isn't something that I consciously feel that I have to keep up or something that, that I'm always thinking about maintaining, uh, because really when it comes down to it, I believe so strongly in gamification and in the Zizzo platform itself that whether I'm being filmed on a podcast or recorded on a podcast, or if I'm on a call with a client or a potential client or one of our customers, I am as guilty as everybody in this company of getting so excited and I could go on forever about it where the, it, none of this ever felt like a job to me. It was more a way for me to get everything out of my brain that I, you know, that I want to say uh, about Zizzo because I do feel so strongly in everything that we're doing here. Um, I mean, I think the obvious answer is that we've completed the season. Um, you know, we put together a solid team. We work together as a team. I think that is something I'm, I'm always extremely proud of is when, when, when I build a team that is, you know, understands and builds the vision with me. It's not something they're just taking direction. They're contributing. Um, and we're all, you know, uh, rowing in the same direction. Uh, so from the standpoint of the entire season, I think that's something, you know, building that team and having that team behind me. In terms of a, a specific episode, you know, I was, we were very fortunate to have Richard Gold, um, episode 11 in our studio, and he shared with us his insights on, you know, behavioral science, organizational behavioral management, and he's just a wealth of information. You know, I, I keep using the pun, you know, that, that episode was gold. You know, and it was super rich with content. So it's uh, uh, that one, that episode specifically was a proud moment for me to have him in studio. I'm most proud of the fact that I went through and I didn't threaten to quit once. <laughs> no, but really, I think um, where what I'm most proud of is the the reach that we were able to get, not just from, a uh, uh, you know, on LinkedIn sharing posts and people that are 
immersed in the business world and in, you know, uh, call center world and, and all of our customers um, and, and that kind of demographic. But the other people in my life, my family, my mom, my friends, everybody that tuned in and listened and at first <laughs> had no idea what we were doing here or why we were doing it, but really learned a lot and got a glimpse um, into what I do here because one of the funny things in my life is everyone knows that I have a job, but nobody really knew what I did. And I think the podcast really uh, opened up my world uh, to the world and, and gave people some really cool insights into, into what I'm doing here and what we're doing here as a company. I don't know that there would be anything that I could do differently. I mean, it, it's a journey that I think we had to take uh, and we had to learn from each episode and from, from each experience. And uh, I, I, I don't know that there's anything I would change. I don't know that there's anything I could change. The journey was, um, was a fun and was an experience that, um, that I'm excited to continue. So if I could have done something differently after going back and watching and rewatching the podcast, because again, I'm obsessive and very critical of myself, I wish I would have said, you know, more <laughs> because I think I only said it about 5,000 times in these 12 episodes. But uh, truthfully, if, uh, if I could go back uh, I, I wouldn't change the transparency and the vulnerability that I, I'm willing to share with the world, but I probably wouldn't have gone as in depth about my drug use, especially considering, uh, don't tell anyone, but I'm actually a sober guy. So uh, sometimes I use humor to as a defense mechanism, and it while it might be funny to me, it doesn't always translate as well on camera or on recording. Uh, so that's something I'm conscious of. And, uh, you know, I don't want to disappoint my mom anymore. So I'm going to lay off of that for season two. Uh, again, I, he's just a wealth of knowledge. I didn't have to say much. And, you know, that conversation, you know, and, and that stemmed from, you know, I met Rich a couple of years ago and our first and we talked about it in the episode, our first conversation, it was just natural, so natural. We understood each other. We understood we come from different backgrounds and experiences, but we're talking the same language. And, you know, this conversation was no different. So um, just the fact that I didn't have to do much, he carried the show. I wasn't involved in one of them uh, with Rich Gold, which when I look back at season one of The Zizzo Effect, the episode with Rich Gold really was, I think, important for people to hear and for people to get that perspective. Uh, but when I think about the episode that we did about data integrity with Zach Diapol, our integrations coordinator, uh, who is, I mean, truthfully, one of my favorite people in the world. And I, I mean this respectfully to Jimmy because I love Jimmy and this process has been really cool. But at, you know, at the end of the day, he's still the founder and CEO of the company. And uh, as much as I'd love to say, I feel 100 percent comfortable doing this with him. You know, I still have a ways to go there. But working with Zach and especially knowing how far out of his comfort zone he was and being able to take my limited experience with podcasting, but my vast experience with performing and guide him through that episode and help him along the way, aside from not realizing he needed to fix his collar the whole time. Um, I felt that was the first time I, I felt a real sense of ownership in what I'm doing here and pride in my ability to draw the best out of people, even when they're not comfortable. You know, we just, you know, recently did our planning session and, you know, we want to continue to bring value uh, to our audience and content that's meaningful. And I think bringing on more guests and diversity of guests and guest types is something I'm really excited to, to bring on. We're, 
even maybe changing uh, the studio slightly to accommodate in-house guests, but also remote guests so we don't limit ourselves. So I'm excited to, you know, to, to bring a diversity of thought. It's not just going to be Andrew and I for, you know, most of the season. I think we're going to see a lot more guests in season two. Season two is going to be really interesting because with season one, our overarching theme of the season was, of course, gamification. That's at the heart of what we do at Zizzo. And I felt that season one was a major learning experience for me, not just from hosting and being a part of the production process and, uh, and everything with doing a podcast, but I learned so much about managerial styles, incentives, motivations, uh, and, and all of that. And now that I've reached a point that I feel comfortable with those things and I feel like a true, uh, expert in that season two is going to open up so many more opportunities to discuss things that I think don't have to always revolve around gamification, but, uh, you know, spoiler alert, I really want to get into certain topics, uh, that I won't dive into deep here, dive deep, something I'd go back and change about season one. Anyway, um, I want to get to the heart of the human condition. It's something that I love about the world that we live in. I love how different everybody is. So I want to focus on those frontline workers, the people that I identify with, especially as a frontline worker, you know, with Zizzo and being the face and the voice of Zizzo, as people call me. Um, but to talk about mental health, to talk about different managerial styles, to talk about what people want from work, where... Season one, I think we did a really good job at educating people about gamification, but I can't wait to flip the script and I want to get educated from people that are doing these jobs, that are are hitting the phones, that are are in the grind, that are on the verge of burnout, but uh, and find out what motivates them, what makes them tick, what makes them happy. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity for season two for uh, both myself and for Jimmy to learn even more about who's using our product, but really who's at the heart of the modern workforce. That's it. That was easy. Was that all of it? Oh, all right. It's the